Hey everybody, this is going to be a real quick video on overclocking an RTX 2080 Ti. This should uh, theoretically apply to 2080, 2070, and all the other variants of those cards, uh, but I am using a 2080 Ti. You're going to need an MSI Afterburner and Superposition Benchmark by Unigen. The links for those can be found in the description. Alright, let's do this quick. The settings button, you're going to click that on MSI Afterburner and under the compatibility properties section, you're going to make sure you have enable hardware control and monitoring checked. You're going to make sure that you have unlock voltage control checked and you're going to set this in all likelihood to third party. If you have an MSI card, to be honest, I have no idea which of the two you should pick. You probably want to pick standard. And if you have a reference design card like a blower card or a founder's edition card, then select reference design. I'm going to pick third party because I have an EVGA card. Um, and then that's good. You can hit OK. And then if it wants you to restart MSI Afterburner, that's totally fine. All right, so we're going to start with the stock settings here. Temperature limit of 84, everything's same. And we're going to click on the little bar graph icon here next to the clock lock slider. This is going to bring up the frequency curve editor. You're going to click this OC scanner button in the top right. It's going to bring up a little window and you'll press scan. This is going to take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. It's basically some software that will automatically determine uh, a reasonable core offset clock in megahertz. So you run that and the output in this little text box here, it'll say average of let's say 227 megahertz in my case. So once that's done, you can close it out, go over to your core clock slider, type 227 or whatever the average offset was for you. And then we'll bring our core voltage and power limit to the max. This will change our temperature limit to 88, which is also fine. It's important to note that you don't want to run this 30 minute long test with core voltage and power limit in not stock settings. So leave core voltage where it was and leave power limit where it was, leave the temperature limit to 84, uh, and only change those sliders after the uh, profiler has determined your core offset. Now the profiler will not tell you anything about your memory clock, so that's going to be a little bit more of a manual process. In order to determine your memory clock, you're going to start from a, a base. It's going to depend on your card. Uh, with the 2080 Ti, I'd say you're probably okay with a 500 offset. On something like a 2080, uh, maybe 450, 2070, 400-ish, it's really going to depend on your card and, and how good the silicon is anyways, so uh, start around there and use the Unigen Superposition Benchmark to determine if your overclock is stable. So if I were you, I would run a Unigen Benchmark with your core clock set to your, you know, your boost number and your memory clock boost to zero. Get yourself a baseline, set your memory clock to your starting point, 400, 500-ish, and run the test. You should see a significant bump. In my case, I saw a bump of about 200 points. From then on, you can bump your memory clock up by 50. Every time you run the benchmark, if you're seeing positive gains in your benchmark score, bump it up another 50. Uh, at some point, you will either start seeing your number go down, or you'll start artifacting, seeing weird GPU things, potentially even crashing. That's your sign that your memory clock is a little too high. Uh, the memory clock is a little finicky in the sense that a lot of the times things won't crash. You'll more than likely just see your score go down. Um, so it's really important to rerun the benchmark and pay attention to the score rather than just checking if it's crashing. It's just not enough. That's pretty much the whole process. Your core clock is set uh, or suggested to you by the profiler tool and the memory clock is just a, you know, a, a couple runs of Unigen to get you there. Anyways, that's been it. Uh, hopefully this has been a quick and concise guide for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks.